Well, here I go spending more money. <laughs> hey guys, it's Charles and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here for the first time, yes, my name is Charles and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys what I got at the most recent Criterion Flash sale that they had on their website. This is actually the first time I actually bought any Criterions from, you know, directly from Criterion. So this was an interesting process for me. I knew the flash sale was going to happen sometime in February, March, but you know what? I was like, oh, I have no job anymore, so I don't think I can afford to buy Criterions. And my mom was like, ooh, can I even afford to buy Criterions, you know, when the Barnes & Noble sale happens in June, July time, like it usually does. But then, you know, I secured a job. So, you know, while sitting at my job, they were like, the flash sale is happening now. And my mind was like, you know what? Why not buy some? Why not? So I scooped up all the ones that I could and you know, here we are at this video showing you what I bought. There were a lot more that I wanted, but you know, by the time I actually got to, you know, shopping, they were already out of stock. So, you know, Rip Yee Yee and The Brood and also Medium Cool, because I really wanted those three movies too, but they were already out of stock and I was like, okay, this is sad, but you know, we gotta just move on. Hopefully during the Barnes & Noble's 50% off Criterion sale that happens in June, July, I'm able to get those three movies and a bunch of other ones, so... I wasn't that sad, but at the same time I was like, oh, I kind of wanted these now. Anyways, let's get to, you know, opening this box already. Okay, so here's the box that, you know, the movies came in, and oh my god, I just got the vaccine yesterday, and god, my arm hurts, so holding this heavy box up is not it. Okay, so I went ahead and opened the box because I was like, I cannot, you know, like live open it because I'm bad at holding the box. And also I was like cutting it. I'm horrible at cutting stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna just do it off camera. Okay, so the first movie I got is Breaking the Waves. And this is a Lars von Trier film. I've seen it once. I didn't like it. But then you know what? I realized it was one of the situations that I didn't like what I was seeing and not that the movie was bad. I was really just annoyed with, you know, the townspeople in the movie and, you know, like, the church in the movie and how they turned their back on the main character. I think her name is Bess. Is it Bess? Let me check. Yep, her name is Bess and I'm like, wow. It's been, like, I think over two years since I've seen the movie and I can still remember the main character's name. I'm like, wow. Powerful mind I have. Anyways, I just hated how the townspeople and, you know, the people from the church treated Bess and I was like, y'all, she is doing the things she's doing because she believes that it will save her husband and I'm like, y'all... Y'all are rude. Y'all are rude. Honestly, this movie is so heartbreaking and it's very hard to watch at times. But you know what? That just describes a Lars von Trier movie in general. I'm very excited to watch the movie again. I know it is a painful watch, but at the same time, I'm like, I would like to see what kind of perspective I have on the film now because usually when I watch a film again, especially when it's been a very long time gap, I usually have a different opinion about the movie. So I would like to see how I feel about the movie now. So the next movie I got was Antichrist, which is another Lars von Trier movie, and like Breaking the Waves, it is also very, you know, hard to watch at times. It's also been a while since I've seen Antichrist, but you know, from what I can remember, it is a very strong movie about grief and loss, and I remember the opening is a very, very explicit scene with a lot of explicit things going on, and uh, I think the imagery of this movie is the thing that really sticks with me. I honestly don't know how Lars von Trier gets his actors to do such fucked up things in movies when it comes to breaking the waves, to Antichrist, to Melancholia. I have not seen The House That Jack Built, nor have I seen Dogville, but I just know he'd be pushing the people in those movies to the extremes, and I'm just like, ooh, I, from an acting standpoint, I can see why these actors want to participate, but at the same time, I'm like, all of them have said that it's been very draining on them, and I'm like, girl. Watching the movie, I feel like y'all are dying inside, you know? Willem Dafoe and Charlotte Gainsborough are brilliant in this movie. It is very hard to watch what they do in this movie. I'm just like, wow, this is acting with a capital A. And you know what? I didn't say it when I was talking about Breaking the Waves, but I'm like, um, who are they? Emily Watson and um, Stellan Skarsgård. They both do a great job. More Emily because, you know, Stellan's in that coma for most of the movie. But you know what? The actors in Lars von Trier's movies, I'm just like, y'all are doing the work but y'all should not be doing the work for this crazy man. Honestly, just reading what Nicole Kidman went through on Dogville, oh, it makes me not want to watch that movie. I mean, I have looked up what happens in that movie, and I'm just like, I don't know if I want to go there. But I hear it's one of Nicole Kidman's best performances that she's ever given, and I'm like, ooh, I probably will watch it sometime down the line just for that reason alone. Also, I find it hilarious that this movie got booed so hard at the Cannes Film Festival when it premiered there. It's very hard to get booed at that festival, to be honest, I'm pretty sure. So, 
this movie getting booed, I'm like, <laughs> ugh. But anyways, I like the movie, and I can't wait to rewatch it. I mean, I'm not going to be running to rewatch it, but I'll rewatch it eventually. I'm more interested in rewatching Breaking the Waves, because that movie, I feel like I wasn't really getting what I should have gotten from that movie from the first time I watched that one. Okay, so the next movie I got was Woman in the Dunes, and this movie, I've actually never seen it before. I've heard so many great things about it, so I was like, you know what, why not buy it? All I really know about the movie is that it's from the 1960s, it's Japanese, and it was critically acclaimed, and it got the director of the movie a Best Director nomination at the Oscars, which, you know, I'm pretty sure back then, well, I don't know, because, you know, sometimes at the Oscars, Best Directors could be foreign directors. It was weird, it was weird at the Oscars back then, when they were like, oh, we love this foreign movie, but we're not going to really nominate for anything other than, you know, maybe screenplay or director, which, it was so weird, it was so weird back then. But yeah, Woman in Dunes, I really don't know that much about it, but you know, I've heard so many great things about it, so hopefully all those great things turn out to be true. So the next movie I got was Children of Paradise, and this is one of the first Criterions I ever watched. I mean, it's in French, and I can understand enough French, so I was like, let me watch it. And you know what? I was like, wow, this really is a brilliant movie. I find it so interesting that this movie was filmed during World War II. It really doesn't feel like it was shot anywhere around World War II, and I don't really understand how, because, you know, during World War II, eventually, you know, the Nazis took over France, so my mind's like, when exactly was this movie shot during World War II? But yeah, Children of Paradise, it is a brilliant French film, it's an amazing film in general, and you know what, I cannot wait to rewatch it. I mean, I think it has been over two years. Some of these movies that I bought, it's been years since I've seen them, so I was like, you know what, let's buy them, that way we can rewatch them finally. So the next movie I got was Lost in America from Albert Brooks. I actually bought Lost in America when it first came out because it was a part of the Criterion sale at Barnes & Nobles that was happening at the time. Like, when they extended it, I'm pretty sure they extended it a few more weeks, which meant that I could buy Lost in America. So I bought Lost in America not knowing anything about it, and I was like, this was just okay. Man, it is really raining outside right now. Like, it is raining hard, it got dark real fast, and the winds are blowing. But, you know, let me finish this video up right now, because I'm just like, my god, I cannot with this lighting and this wind and rain that's right next to me. But yeah, back to Lost in America. I think the movie is pretty great. I need to rewatch it, but I think Albert Brooks is such a smart director and a writer. He is a very interesting actor as well. In this movie, he kept talking about Easy Rider, and I was like, after watching Easy Rider, because I'm pretty sure I watched this one first and then Easy Rider, so I never really understood what he was trying to say. But after watching Easy Rider, I'm like, oh, now I understand what he's trying to say. The movie is all about looking for satisfaction in, you know, the modern world, or modern world at the time when this movie was made. And I was like, okay, the ending really made me be like, you know what? Where the money reside, where the money reside, honestly. Okay, so the next one I got is a more recent release from them, which would be The Parallax View, which is another film from Alan J. Pakula. So that means Alan has two films in the Criterion Collection, this and the iconic Clute. When they announced this movie was going to be in the collection, I was like, okay, how am I going to watch this movie? That way I can know whether or not I want to buy it. So it turns out it was streaming on Amazon Prime. It might still be streaming on Amazon Prime, but you know, I was like, lucky me. So that night I watched it on Amazon Prime and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. And you know what? I was like, oh, so apparently Alan J. Pakula has a trilogy of like paranoia apparently. And this is the second one. So it's Clute, The Parallax View, and then All the President's Men. And I'm like... That really is a great triple feature. I really like how this movie starts off in Seattle. I was like, oh, I'm from there. I'm from there. And you know what? I've been to the Space Needle, the most basic place you can go to in Seattle. The movie is very exciting, you know, full of paranoia. And you know what? By the end of the movie, I was like, wow, we really went on this journey of trying to uncover the truth. And I was like, wow, going down conspiracy holes can lead you to death. Yeah. Warren Beatty, by this point in his career, it wasn't even that long. It was like, what, mid-70s that this movie came out? And I was like, baby, someone needs to tell you to put some moisturizer on, some lotion on, because you're looking wrinkly already. Like, you and Robert Redford in the 70s, like the mid to late 70s, I was like, how did y'all evolve so fast? White men really do not age well for the most part because they do not take care of themselves. The last movie I got from the Criterion Flash sale would be Smooth Talk starring Laura Dern and directed by Joyce Chopra. I think that's how you say her last name. Chopra? Yes, I think so. Honestly, the lighting in this video is wonky because sometimes it's bright outside, 
because you know the clouds have let up and it's not as dark clouds but then sometimes it's dark clouds so it's dark so I apologize if this video has like inconsistency in lighting I'm just like that's just how it is Back to Smooth Talk, when they announced that this movie was going to be in the Criterion Collection, I was like, ooh, another Laura Dern movie. But I was like, ooh, but this is one of her earlier movies and it's kind of hard to find a way to watch it. But you know, I found the sneaky way to watch it. I found a sneaky way to watch it. Yeah. Anyways, I think the movie is a great coming of age movie. And honestly, the last half hour of this movie, things kick into overdrive. That last third of the movie... They go from, you know, just a coming-of-age movie into, like, a thriller, basically. And I'm like, wow, this stuff, this conversation, this dialogue between Laura Dern and um, Treat Williams, I was like, this is having me on the edge of my seat. Honestly, Treat Williams in the movie, very dangerous, but so hot. And I was like, baby, this is a bad combination because you can get away with doing a lot of bad things. In this movie, I was like, baby... Ooh, you're hot, but stay away from Laura Dern because mm 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 mm, don't mess with her. Honestly, I love this movie so much, but in my mind, my mind was like, if they add a fourth movie starring Laura Dern into the Criterion Collection, I thought it would be Citizen Ruth from you know Alexander Payne because that movie is amazing, and you know Laura Dern's performance in that movie should have gotten her an Oscar nomination. But you know what? That's another conversation for a different time. Anyways, those were all the Criterions I got at the Criterion Collection flash sale online that just happened, so yeah! So tell me down below in the comments if you got any movies from the flash sale that just happened. And also, Woman in the Dunes is the only movie I haven't watched that I bought here, so tell me down below in the comments if you've seen Woman in the Dunes and if it's a great movie or not, because everyone keeps saying it's great, and I'm just like, okay, if everyone says it's great, the expectations are high, so you know, tell me down below in the comments if it really is that good. Hey, if you like this video, maybe you should go ahead and, you know, subscribe and like the video itself because, you know, liking the video helps, I guess. But, you know, I do movie reviews, I collect Blu-rays and talk about Blu-rays on my channels, I do music reactions, and you know what? I do whatever else I want to do on my channel because, you know what? It's my channel and I'm going to do whatever else I want to do. So, yeah, if any of that sounds interesting to, you know, you, you watching, then, you know, subscribe because, you know, why not? And, hey, if you like my personality, then bonus, right? Maybe? Seriously, whenever I do my, you know, complete Blu-ray collection, which is going to be split up into sections, it's going to be a wild time talking about every single movie, maybe even doing some, like, recreations of scenes in movies. That's going to be a time, a time that will happen later when it's sunny outside and not so dark so fast and not raining all the time. But then again, I live in Washington, so it's usually almost always waning, waning, raining, ha. Huh? Ah, uh, speech class, speech class. But yeah, my complete Blu-ray collection videos probably will be coming out either late spring or sometime early summer, sometime around that time zone. Anyways, you guys, thank you for coming to my channel and watching this whole video. And yeah, I will see you in the next video if you're around, you know? Mm-hmm, yep. So I'm gonna go now. So yes, um, bye.